Today we are going to talk about uh, mining different uh, patterns using your association rules and correlation analysis. Till now we have seen about your a priori algorithm, FP growth and how a frequent pattern is used, what is support, what is confidence, everything. Based upon those approaches only we basically talk about your frequent patterns. Coming to here, frequent pattern mining, this I will be talking the first three are related to your association rule. The last one I will be talking about your correlation analysis. What is the first one here? Mining multi-level association. What do you mean by multi-level? I have different levels based on the levels I will be doing the association analysis. See, you all can see here. This is about your multiple, the second one. Multi-level association. So, the multi-level association is what? You all can see an example here. I am talking about what? Your milk. Milk can be divided into two. One is your normal milk. Other one is your skim milk. I can take the best example of your computer. A computer can be a desktop or a PC, anything. Now, here I have given support. That is nothing but my threshold. Here I have given a threshold. Here I have given a threshold. Why my threshold for normal milk is more than my skim milk? Because skim milk... The people who drink skim milk is less compared to my people who drink the normal milk. That is the reason the threshold is different. When I am combining two, that is normal milk threshold and my skim milk threshold, I will be getting total threshold of the main milk. So, you can just see here, these are the different levels. This is my level 1, level 2. You can take the hierarchy of your uh, college also. First you have a director, then comes your principal, then the next level is the faculty, then comes the students. Again in students you can just uh, classify into different levels like your fourth year, third year, second year and first year. The same thing is applicable here. You all can see items often form hierarchies. As I told you, you can see the hierarchies here. Flexible support settings. What are the items at the lower level are expected to have lower support? The same thing. Here the skim milk, the people who buy skim milk is less. So, you can see the threshold or the support is less compared to the people who drink the normal milk. This is nothing but your multi-level mining. Next coming to your multi-dimensional. This I will be talking about your relational databases and everything here. See, you have single dimensional analysis, you have multi-dimensional analysis. What do you mean by single dimensional? X buys milk, X buys bread. Same, it's single, only one person, I am talking about single person here, single person is buying what milk, single person is buying your bread. When coming to the multidimensional, again in your multidimensional, you can have two things, one is no repeated predicates and one is repeated predicates. What do you mean by a predicate? Predicate is nothing but what are the attributes I am using, everything comes under my predicates, yes or no? Now, here again I have interdimensional association rules and then I have hybrid dimensional association rules. In your interdimension, -dim interdimension is no repetition of predicates, no repetition of attributes here. When I am telling A plus B equal to C, it is A plus B equal to C. I can't say A plus B is equal to AC. No, here it is no repetition of attributes. A is an attribute, B is an attribute. Ultimately, the final answer, whatever I am getting is C. C is an attribute. You can see here, age, occupation gives me what? Buys, coke. This and this person, two, two different attributes. I am taking here, age is an attribute, occupation is an attribute. This two different attributes gives me what? Buys a coke. These are what? No repetition. Are you finding any repetition of predicates? No, I am not finding any repetition of predicates. When coming to the hybrid, in hybrid we have repetition of predicates. That is, when I am talking about student age, that same would be given in my student age. I can reuse it multiple times. Now you can see, age buys. Buys what? Coke. Age of X is 19 to 25. Buys what? X popcorn gives me what? Buys of even Coke. This is my repeated predicates. You all can see I have buy as a predicate here. I have buy as a predicate here. But coming to your interdimensional, what is happening? I have age as separate one, occupation as separate one, but which is giving me buy. This is all about your multidimensional association. Next is your 
Quantitative Association. In Quantitative Association, I will be talking about your static discretization and dynamic discretization, two things. Now, coming to the static, static is what? It's a predefined, I can't change anything and we represent the static in the form of a cube. It's called as your data cube method also. Now, you all can see this is a cube. Here, I have zero level, first level, second level and my third level. I have different levels. In the zero level, I don't have anything. In first level, I have age, income and buys. Now, here what is happening? Here, I am combining age with income in my second level. Next, I am combining age with buys. Then I am combining income and buys together. Here I have got pairs. These are my single attributes. In the next level, I have got pairs of the attributes. In the last level, I am combining everything. Whatever I have in level 1, finally the ultimate last in the cube, cube I am getting the all the three together. This is called a static. I don't have any change here. Now, whereas coming to the dynamic, the name itself is telling us what is dynamic? I can change it. See here, the best example I can give you is your stock market. Stock market, time to time, it is changing. Your results, in, in uh, first year, first semester, you might have got 90%. In the first year, second semester, you might got 82%. Or next, in your 201, you have got probably 76%. So, your graph is changing. It is dynamic because time to time, the result is changing. So, that is the reason. It is dynamic. You all can see an example here. This is about your dynamic discretization. Coming to your negative and rare patterns. Till now, whatever we have seen, last three are your association rule mining, mining methods. Now, this is about your correlation. If you all can remember, when we are talking about correlation, we have spoke about your positive graph and your negative graph. That comes into picture here. See now, here you have rare patterns and uh, negative patterns. Rare patterns are what? Which are rarely found are your rare patterns. Negative patterns are when I am talking about CSE, I can't include EC here because I am purely talking about your CSE. EC can't be combined here. So, it is a negative. So, rare patterns which are what? Low support that is low threshold are called as your rare patterns. You can see an example here. Buying Rolex watches. Setting individual based on special group based support threshold for valuable items. Here rare it can be found in the types of watches with a minimum support that is minimum Threshold, if I take a 50 as my count, in 50, how many might have a Rolex watch? It might be one or two. So, which is what? A minimum threshold, minimum support. Whereas, compared to that, when I talk about your Timex, Fast Track, your Fossils, this might be more compared to the Ro Rolex watches. Now, coming to your negative patterns. In negative patterns, as I told you what? It's a complete deviation. When I am talking about CSE, I can't include... EC, EC is a complete deviation towards my negative this thing towards the CSE department. Now, since it is unlikely that one buys Ford expedition and that is an SUV car and Toyota, a hybrid car together. Now, Ford and this both can't be same, right? Ford is a normal SUV whereas your uh, Toyota is your hybrid car. So, those both are what? It is negatively correlated. So, if you all can remember the graphs, negatively is you will be getting a graph from right to left. It is positive, you will be getting a graph from left to right. That is your, this thing. Negatively correlated patterns that are in frequent trend to be more interesting than those are that are frequent. Yes or no? Now, this might be more interesting because those are negative. Why? Now, I will be getting a question, why this Toyota is not same as the Ford, I will be extracting more information. That is the reason it would be interesting. This is all about your frequent pattern minings. So, what did we do in your frequent pattern minings? We spoke about your mining multi-levels, mining uh, your dimensional. Here itself, we spoke about your quantitative, that is nothing but your what? Static and dynamic. Then coming to this, it is about your correlation analysis. Thank you.